Ahead of free agency in League of Legends, one of the top mid laners, if not one of the top players in North America, has already been re signed. Ardo Cal and Jacob Wolf for ESPN Esports breaking down Bjergsen re signing a two year extension with TSM, which, though we don't know the financial details, we do know that he becomes a part owner. Shares were part of the agreement. He now co owns TSM. This is part of a larger uh, agreement among the LCS teams and the organization that if a player has played three consecutive years or more with a franchise, they can now co-own the team as part of the negotiations. Jacob, what do you make of this announcement and this move? I think this is a really big deal, right? Some of these companies now are saying that they're valued anywhere from 150 to $500 million. A lot of these major esports organizations like Cloud9, TSM, Team Liquid, et cetera. When you look at that alone, even if he only got 1%, that, that incentivizes him by several million, right? It can incentivize him, you know, say TSM, for example, and I, I don't believe this is true, but say they're, they're a $150 million team and he owns 1%. He's less $1.5 million extra, the cherry on top of that salary, right? So it incentivizes Bjergsen in a way that I think that only TSM could do this because of the rule. Uh, but also I think that, you know, there was a big market for someone like him. He's not been a free agent in a long time. I believe his last year deal was three years, so he's been stuck with TSM for a while. And, yeah, it does feel like he's the face of that organization. And I know that the PR release sort of laid out how he replaced Reginald, who is the actual owner of the organization, the founder of the organization. And his who, first mid laner. Yes, correct, right. So this is sort of following in the footsteps was the sort of the nice little spin on it. But... I think when you look at this, it incentivized him in a way that he was not going to get from any other team. And I guess Bjergsen's now a millionaire if he wasn't already. <laughs> and also, this will make him the longest tenured player in TSM history. So let's unpack this new rule. The fact that if a player has been with an organization for three or more years consecutively, uh, this is now a bargaining chip that organizations can use. Hey, you can own a part of our company. The first thing that I thought of, Jacob, what was... Well, this certainly plays in the favor of teams that are already in the LCS for three or more years that have this kind of arrangement. But we're getting new teams in the league this year, Evil Geniuses being a perfect example. We're going to get new teams later on. Yeah. This puts them at a disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, there is all, there's only three players in the league right now who qualify for this role. There will be a couple that qualify next year. So right now, those three players are Bjergsen on TSM, Sneaky on Cloud9, and Stixa on CLG. Those are the only players who have been with the same team for more than three years without a break. So starting next summer, Wild Turtle and FlyQuest will become eligible for this. And then also Doublelift and Team Liquid at the end of next year, at the end of the 2020 season, will become eligible because he joined in November of 2017. So he has played three consecutive seasons at that point. But right now, that is a very small pool. Those also happen to be three of the oldest teams in the, in the mm -hmm. league, right? In TSM, C9, and CLG. And so it makes it very advantageous for them to retain those players. You know, I think Sneaky and Stixay both are above average 80 carries. But no one had the value that Bjergsen did in North America. Very few players were that valuable that were expiring this year. And I think that there was a huge demand for him. I think that there were a lot of teams. I mean, hell, we have three brand new teams coming into the league this year. We have Evil Geniuses. We have Immortals returning. And we have Dignitas returning, all which you know, completely invalidate this rule, but all which have a lot of money to spend and want to build championship contenders. And so when you look at that, I think that there was going to be a huge demand for someone like Bjergsen to be your staple piece. Maybe not with those teams, but all of them in the league. I think that a lot of teams want to rebuild. And I think if you're evil geniuses or if you're 100 thieves and you're either new or have a, a bad season, this is someone you look at. Is this someone you look at throwing a massive, unprecedented contract? And now that TSM has the ability to offer him an equity stake, which again, even 1% makes him a, a millionaire overnight Absolutely. in terms of his net worth, right? If he has 1% of TSM, if you look at that, that incentivizes him to stick there and to stay there throughout the rest of his career, which obviously this is a two-year deal, so another two years for Bjergsen. I think that that is pretty unfair, I think, to a lot of these new teams because Franchising happened two years ago. A lot of these teams haven't even been in the league as long as this rule mandates, right? And so I think that I think that this is, I like the idea of the rule change, but I don't like the practice in which it's happening. I wonder if it would have been more fair 
if it were simply if a player had been in the LCS for X amount of years, no matter which team consecutively, they are eligible from every franchise to get this kind of contract offer. So for example, if I was a player in the LCS for three consecutive years, any team could offer me X salary and X percent of our company if they are deemed to be valuable enough. Yeah, I mean, I still think it incentivizes the long-tenured teams, right? So, like, I would say the most valuable franchises in the LCS, just if you're looking at them, are TSM, C9, and Team Liquid. And so, again, that, like, just the ownership rule in general puts a huge advantage on them. Because those companies have been around longer, and therefore they've been able to accrue more value from, from a numbers perspective. Whereas some of the newer teams, like Golden Guardians and 100 Thieves and et cetera, while some of them, especially in 100 Thieves case, are very valuable organizations, they are nowhere close because they have been at, either they've not existed in the case of Golden Guardians or they have not existed in the way that they do now mm -hmm. in the case of these other teams. And so I think that no matter how you slice it, you're giving a little bit of an advantage to the, the teams that have the best business operations. And I, I think that there's really no way to make this better. Again, I like the idea of players getting more. I like seeing players sort of look to transition. I mean, like, if Bjergsen retires in two years, which I don't think he will, but if, if that happens, he can, walk, he can sell a stake in TSM and walk off with some nice hefty money if he wants to. Or right? he can stay with the team and help and, recruit and, new yeah, players. Yeah, and become a Magic Johnson-esque, I think that's the easiest comparison, Magic Johnson-esque person that, like he did to the Lakers after yeah. he after he threw in the towel, right? So I think that Bjergsen's in a similar position. He's certainly a franchise player. There's a lot of brand identity associated between him and TSM. But I think generally the, this, the, the rule, no matter how you slice it, makes it unfair. I want to ask about TSM, but first let us know what you think about this arrangement, whether you think it will be advantageous, whether this is a good long-term play, or you think this will be bad for the LCS. Let us know in the comments below of this video. I want to see some conversation from you out there uh, regarding this decision from the LCS and these kind of contracts, uh, what Bjergsen just received and what we will see in the future. But what about TSM? I mean, Bjergsen has been with this team for a long time. We already talked about that. Their last really successful year was 2017. They haven't made world since. They won uh, locally in North America in 2017, but they haven't had that level of success since. So on top of Bjergsen, that's a good piece to have there, but what else does TSM need to do to really get back to prominence? Honestly, looking at this, the biggest problem they have is the jungle. I think Broken Blade was a welcome addition this year in the top lane. I think that he showed that, you know, a lot of people put sort of value on imports from places like South Korea or in some cases Europe. This is a guy from Turkey who who really sort of made it and, and made it for himself. It's a region that all of us out of all sort of, they're not called wild cards anymore, but all of the non-major regions in the League of Legends ecosystem, everyone knew that Turkey and Brazil were really, really talented compared to a lot of the others. And this guy's just torn it up. I think that he's a very, very good player. Uh, and I think that top lane is set. Obviously, mid lane is set. They just re-signed Bjergsen. Jungle is a problem for this team. Mm -hmm. um, I think that bot lane, I don't know if I would necessarily go with the configuration of Sven and Smoothie. I like both of those players individually, and I've followed them for many, many years across them playing on various different teams. But I do think jungle, jungle is just something that they really need to find a solution for. And that's another commodity I look for. Jungle every year is a role that Jungle is a, a role every single year that I think is very high in demand in North America because it, it's something that people like to use their two regional import slots on top laners, AD carries, mid laners, right? They like to bring in Korean players or European players in those roles. And then jungle, but you've got to find it, right? That's part of what makes Liquid so fascinating. They have the best North American born jungler in X Smithy. And so yeah. he, he default clarifies that role for them. He's very talented. But there aren't a lot of Smithies in the world, right? So you've seen a lot of different teams, C9 with Blabber, you know, TSM tried with Acadian and Grieg, and, and there are a lot of these different, a lot of these different North American junglers who were sort of that, that tier below that are finally getting their shot, but they're not necessarily living up to championship world expectations. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at Team Liquid, they're the one that's figured it out, and it's because they have somebody who's a veteran who knows how to play the game in a way that others don't. Well, you mentioned Smithy. Of course, he's competing with Team Liquid at Worlds, and we have a whole team at Worlds. We got Emily Rand, we got Tyler Erzberger, Ashley Kong, Sean Morrison, and more on the ground in Europe right now. Follow us at ESPN underscore esports. Continued coverage of 
available, of course, at ESPN.com slash esports.